Mr. President, like many of my colleagues, we were just back home last week and talking, in my case, to Alaskans, uh, and all the issues that were on their mind were pretty simple, the economy and jobs. Alaska has fared better than most states over the last two years, but no matter where I go, maybe a small convenience store while I'm driving around town or Home Depot, the gas station, or wherever I may get a chance to engage with Alaskans, people are concerned about the economy and the ability for our jobs to be created in this great country of ours. Alaskans known, have known that the economy will take some time to turn around. That's why today I'm pleased to talk about a little bit about the Jobs Act before us this week. And hopefully as we move forward, we'll spend some time on the debate on how important this work will be. Last week when I was in Alaska, I had the Transportation Secretary LaHood in Alaska. We had a chance to travel around and get a good sense on what is important to Alaska with regards to ports and roads and airports. The, the core infrastructure of our state is no different than any other state. It's critical that we repair, put into shape some of the facilities that are falling apart or in some cases expanding them. The Jobs Act alone would add in Alaska $200 million to repair Alaska's transportation network. As you can imagine, that $200 million would be spent with the private sector, construction companies, contractors, hiring private individuals, workers to work on those jobs, well, good paying jobs to provide good incomes for their families. The same is true in that same piece of legislation, the JOBS Act that's in front of us, that it would offer for Alaska around $62 million for school construction, which again, as you travel around my state, and I'm sure like any other state, the need for improvements and expansion to the schools uh, that some have been there for many, many years and have not had the renovations necessary. Again, providing hundreds and hundreds of jobs. The JOBS Act also has some good steps to deal with small businesses. How to ensure that they get a break off their taxes, to ensure that they have a benefit as we try to move this economy forward and the tax provisions, the payroll tax reduction, which would affect 20,000 Alaskan businesses in a positive way, reducing their tax burden. Or the working families that would see a reduction in their payroll taxes. On an average for a middle class family would be almost $2,000 and not a bad gift in a sense uh, as we move into this holiday season, but it's really their money. And it means that giving back this $2,000 to the middle class families means they'll put it into the economy. They'll spend it in the economy. They'll use it as they see fit. However, I want to lay down a marker. As I've said about the jobs bill, it's important those, as I just mentioned, the roads and water and sewer and ports that need to be repaired and renovated and expanded, the schools that need to be built or expanded and repaired also, or the benefits to our small business community and the benefits to our middle class working families, all important. But how we pay for it is also important because we have to make sure it's paid for. But I want to say that I want to kind of put down the marker on at least the first proposal that was laid down regarding how the president was planning to pay for this. And let me first start with the oil and gas industry. Oil and gas industry for Alaska is about 85% of our economy in the sense of the money that goes into our state treasury, providing well over 40,000 jobs. Nationwide, the oil and gas industry produces over 9 million jobs, contributes over 2 trillion dollars to our economy. I know some of my colleagues on my side of the aisle, I would say, that like to blast big oil, but as we know, the oil and gas industry is made up of hundreds, well over 500 companies of all sizes, small, medium-sized, large. Singling out a growing industry and imposing a tax penalty, in my view, is the wrong choice. It's the wrong road to go down. We need to recognize the potential for more job creation instead, of, in, instead by supporting increased domestic oil and gas development. By developing the Alaska Arctic offshore resources alone, we can create over 50,000 jobs nationwide over the coming decades, jobs being created right here in our country. 
with 400 jobs as an example, just in Washington to upgrade the Kulik drilling unit, which will be utilized in Alaska. Or the 1,000 jobs in Louisiana to build new Arctic supply ships right now. So when you look at what the potential is and when you look at the opportunities of the Arctic for oil and gas development, American jobs, American jobs not only on the Arctic and in, in Alaska, but also throughout the country where many of the facilities that will be needed to construct or the material utilized will be built, as I mentioned in Washington State, Louisiana. Also, the federal revenue that would be generated. The Chamber of Commerce has estimated that developing and increasing production on federal lands could produce well over $200 billion in new revenues to our country. An Alaska analysis puts the federal revenues just for the Beaufort and Chukchi Seas at $160 billion. And for those that aren't familiar where those are, those are just above the North Slope uh, in the Arctic. These have a potential of well over 24 billion barrels of oil development in the known technically recoverable reserves today, upwards to 24, 26 billion. Now, I will tell you that I do support, and I understand in the original proposal, they, they wanted to uh, take away some of these tax incentives that help our industry move forward, especially the smaller companies, expand exploration and development. And I recognize that tax reform needs to be done. And I'm a strong supporter of tax reform. When I look at the Senator Wyden, Senator Coates, and myself, we've supported a piece of legislation that's all about tax reform. And I believe in a holistic proposal, not just selective industries. So don't get me wrong. Do I believe in tax reform? Do I believe in trying to clear out loopholes and incentives that aren't working or may be used improperly? Absolutely. And that's why, again, we supported a much broader perspective. But in the pay-fors or the, the, the tax proposals to pay for the jobs bill, this is not the right approach. Another concern I have is on aviation. Alaska has six times more pilots and 16 times more aircraft per capita than any state in the country. Alaska has limited road infrastructure. 80% of our communities are accessed uh, not by roads, but by water or by air. So it's critical that we have the right kind of aviation system. General aviation is not a luxury in Alaska. It is a necessity. It is our roads in the highway, our highway in the sky. That's the utilization of our airlines and small planes. The general aviation component is critical for business, life safety, moving things from one village to another. One piece of the President's Jobs Bill would change the way the business can treat the depreciation of general aviation aircraft and create a disincentive to buy American-made aircraft and further depress the industry that has already felt a significant impact due to the recession. The administration and Congress should not be demonizing legitimate business travel. General aviation is more than just business jets that I know we like to read about and see in papers, and that's what people like to highlight. But in Alaska, it is about moving from one community to the other. This would impact the turboprop aircraft, which are the workhorse for the Alaska General Aviation Fleet. Another administration proposal would impose a $100 per flight user fee on certain general aviation aircraft. This is not a wise or even cost effective way to administer a tax. General aviation users pay their fair share now. They pay for the aviation system through a per gallon tax on their aviation fuel. Matter of fact, the general aviation industry has even agreed to a modest increase in this fuel tax as part of the FAA Federal Aviation Reauthorization Bill, which passed the Senate earlier this year. And it shows their commitment to pay their fair share, but in an efficient way, and also puts it back into aviation, which is what in our state is, again, as I said, the highway in the sky to move goods and people all across our state. Again, I think the idea the administration has of $100 per flight user fee is just another burden, another fee, another tax that is not necessary and very inefficient. Again, I want to move on to some additional as we think about job creation and what's going on. The other piece of this that I'm concerned about, the taxes that are associated with this idea, the jobs bill, which I support elements of it, as I mentioned, very important. But the issue when it comes to eliminating 
or limiting, I should say, the itemized deductions for charitable and mortgage interest deductions for families over $200,000. Uh, again, I think this is not a well-founded idea. I recognize the administration is trying to find ways to pay for things, uh, but this is not, in my view, uh, a good idea or a smart move. When you think of a family, now some might say someone, a family making $200,000 uh, is wealthy. I would tell you, uh, if you have a couple kids in school and you're trying to figure out their future, and after you figure out the deductions, your health care costs, everything else, $200,000 disappears very quickly. And we need to ensure that limiting the deductions for these middle class families continues. Not limiting them, but ensuring that deduction for mortgage interest, charitable contributions continues at the level that they can take a benefit from. So with those three or four items, I have concerned with the way the pay fors or the tax increases to pay for the jobs bill are being handled. Now I know there's new discussion, and I'm glad there's new discussion, because it would be difficult for me to support any jobs bill with a pile of these new taxes or tax increases that are being proposed. This would not be in the interest of my constituents in Alaska, would not be in the interest of my uh, industries that work hard in Alaska, creating jobs not only in our state but across this country. Uh, I agree that we need to do what we can to have a jobs bill, but let's have a fair pay for it in order to pay for it, not these additional taxes that I think would be uh, a burden on working families, small businesses. Let me also, if I can just digress for one last second before I uh, yield the floor back. Mr. Chairman, it's always, Mr. President, it's always enjoyable. I, I read every business newspaper I can. I try to read every business magazine I can. I want to absorb uh, as much information in we, as we live in Washington here during the session and the work weeks and then getting back home I hear from individuals. But it's amazing to me, and I know in the debate on the floor here we sit around and we have our philosophical debates. We saw some just a little bit ago on the old days versus the new days. I've never seen the old days. I've been here only three years. Uh, and, you know, this place hasn't run very well in the sense of trying to get things up and, and dealt with. But I will tell you some of the decisions I know, Mr. President, you have taken, I've taken, many on this side of the aisle have taken uh, a lot of votes that have helped move this country forward. I'll, I'll tell you one specifically, in which is about the auto industry. And I, I noticed uh, as I was sitting here waiting for the debate, I was looking through these articles, and here's one yesterday from Wall Street, which I know is, you know, it, it's not your most liberal <laughs> newspaper to say the least. Uh, but if you recall, a couple of years ago, we made a decision that we were going to take some risk. We we're going to try to move this country forward, save an industry that was struggling, that employed people in this country, and was competing worldwide. Folks on the other side said we were going to create, you know, a disaster by our actions. We would destroy the economy, we would sink this industry with, you know, the list went on and on, all the complaints. But as I read the headline in the Wall Street Journal from yesterday, and it reads, automakers now import jobs. Import jobs. What does this mean? This means they're bringing jobs back to this country. They specifically mention Japan and China. Now, Three years ago, I could read you a different headline. Auto industry on their deathbed. Never going to survive. Maybe we'll only have one auto company left. We have now three, and actually, the day before, you look at the numbers, Chrysler, 27% up over the previous year in sales. GM, 20% up. Ford, 9% up. The American auto industry is doing well because of what we did here. Now, some called it a bailout. I disagree. What we did was partner with the industry to help them get over the hump, the recession, the struggle. They're paying back every dime that the federal government loaned them, and they're profitable, they're hiring people, they're growing the industry, and they're bringing jobs back to this country. I'd say the policy we did, despite the naysayers, the negative attitudes people had on the other side, worked. Now maybe the Wall Street Journal's wrong, but I don't think so. Because I've seen article after article that states the same. 
I can point to many others. Now, is it as robust as we want in the economy? No. Can it do better? Absolutely. And that's why the jobs bill is important. Important for my state, important for every state. Investing in the issues that matter, water, roads, uh, sewers, uh, electrification, schools, you name it, putting money back into taxpayers' pockets instead of the IRS taking it and hoarding it, putting it back where it counts. That's what the jobs bill does. We have disagreements on how to pay for it. I think we're going to get to a better solution because some of us, more of the moderate wing of the Democrats, are arguing that we can't have these selective taxes the way they're laid out in the proposal presented by the president. We need to have a more simplified system and pay for it in a different way, but not penalize certain companies because maybe you don't like them or you have some, it creates a great headline, but let's focus on the right way to do this. I anticipate we will be able to have a different pay for, a different proposal on how to pay for a great potential to bring more jobs back. But I end on that note only because I want to make sure, I know we're going to hear more naysaying, but the bottom line is, the proof is in the pudding. That article I just read gives you that. Mr. President, I again want to thank you for the time and the opportunity to say a few words about the jobs bill. My concern where I want to lay my marker down, but also uh, about the success we've had on taking some votes that were tough votes and the success we've had to move this economy forward. Not as fast as we all would like, but better than I think the folks on the other side who just say nay, say no to everything. So let me end there, Mr. President, and I'll yield the floor back and notice the absence of a quorum.